welcome. I'm David Van, and you're watching Sooner Politics News. How's your weekend going? It's April 4th, it's Saturday, and I hope you're getting along as best you can. Uh, my best wishes to you and for your health and for all of Oklahoma that we get through this together. It has been a couple of interesting weeks, hasn't it? We've got a lot of things going on. I never would have dreamed a month ago we would be at this place today. Would you? You know, it's, it's really unusual how all the political fights and battles that were going on just a month ago are all of a sudden the furthest thing from our concerns. Right now, we're just looking at how do we survive, how does our economy survive, and how do we get uh, anywhere where we can do anything with, uh, with this crazy kind of uh, uh, situation. So let's get into uh, the stories we're covering tonight. We've got a lot of things going on, and uh, we're going to go through them one by one, starting, of course, with, uh, you know, hope you're getting along, hope you're getting... Uh, if you're sick, I hope you're getting over it. Uh, my goodness, we got so many things. So let's take them one by one, and let's uh, let's not talk about uh, the virus for a little bit. And let's start talking about some other things. You know, some things on our constitutional calendar are not going to change. We're just going to have to deal with them. And our capital tonight is dark. We've got. Uh, Really very little going on there. Uh, they were planning for spring break back in the middle of last month, and then they pulled everybody back together again right away into that week of spring break, and they said, you know what, let's plan for the catastrophic. Let's set up a rule that allows for proxy voting. That means if your lawmaker can't get to the Capitol to vote as your representative, as the voice representing you, he can give his vote to some other politician. That's a problem. Yes, it is. Now, uh, the fellow who presented on the floor is a man that uh, I, I trust his integrity, John Eccles. He's never lied to me. John's been a solid straight shooter. And you know, it's not just me, it's with just about everybody I've I've talked to said that and John says look we're gonna pass this and we're never gonna use it I hope he's right and I'm sure he does too but Governor Stitt has called everybody back to the Capitol and Monday morning we've got to discuss some emergency funding contingencies for the things that we've got to get done now uh, yes this has set our budget back and yes it has shut down our economy it's going to have an effect that probably lasts at least two years. Why do I say that? Because next year's budget is going to be based on uh, the income that's generated this year. And then the income uh, taxes that we were supposed to be collecting this spring are largely devastated. On top of that, the oil revenue. We've got one of the worst oil problems that we've had in so many years. I mean, I would have to go back to the mid to later 80s to talk about oil in this dire situation. And yes, our economy does rely on it. So we've got that condition going on and uh, the governor is going to be calling them in Monday morning. No, the Capitol is not going to be filled with people. Uh, I talked to uh, John Eccles about how do I get in there as a member of the press. He told me how to do it. I don't know. You know, this is one of those things where even if I can go there, I don't know that I need to go there. They're going to webcast it, and so we should follow that. So that's on the calendar. On Wednesday, our Constitution says it's time to file for the next elections. That's right. In November, we're going to be replacing, or at least having the question should we replace, at least half of our senators. And then we're going to uh, have to have a vote on every one of our state representatives. Oh, yeah, and there's that guy in the White House, Donald Trump. So we've got that going on. We've got all five of our congressmen, uh, one of our U.S. senators. So there's all these filings going on. Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. 
it's important folks pay attention to this watch what's going on now the election board has uh put together some special contingencies in fact let's take a look at what the what it looked like last time it filed yeah this is the capital the long lines i mean hundreds and hundreds of people standing in the line waiting to file do you think that's going to happen no i think it's going to be drive-through and uh, probably a few of them will want a double latte and a cheeseburger with that or something. But anyway, uh, this is going to be interesting. Let's see, because there's always surprises. Always surprises. So that's what's going on uh, with the Capitol filings this week. Let's talk about politics. Yeah. You know all those uh, primaries are supposed to still be going on? Well, a lot of them are put on hold. Truth is, a bunch of the conventions are put on hold as well. Uh, I've got a word tonight from some of the party leadership in Oklahoma that we may be attempting to do an online uh, conference call type state convention as well as district conventions because uh, their business has to go on. Now, uh, most of that business is deciding who our delegates are going to be to the National Convention. Beyond that, we really don't have to get a whole lot of other things handled. We can easily put a number of these things off, and we probably should. This is no way uh, to decide some very important and structural issues as the Republican Party is facing, at least at our state convention. So I hope uh, to see that uh, just do a simple, get some delegates that will go represent us and take care of that. So that's going to be an interesting thing. Now, the Democrats have a much harder task because there is uh, still a challenge out there. Bernie Sanders, keep in mind, the guy who had a heart attack last summer is still in the race. And even though Biden, the last you know count, he was way ahead. But both of these guys are hitting 80, and both of them are still facing the COVID flu or COVID-19 virus, as is our own president. And what would we do if, uh, if we all of a sudden didn't have uh, the choice of one or more of them? Um, God help them all survive. This is no, nothing to wish upon your worst enemy. However, we've got a lot of things going on. We've got, uh, you know, the mental health and cognizance of uh, the former vice president. We've got to deal with that. And then, of course, the communist in chief from Vermont. Uh, is his heart going to hold up? Because keep in mind, if he gets the COVID flu virus, having a heart condition is one of the complications that has led to higher death rates. So these are somber and serious issues. Yeah, I talked about it. Not many other people really want to know, nor do I. But I just feel we got to talk about the elephant in the room. You ever watch some of these morning and afternoon conferences from some of our governors and some of our presidents, uh, our president, excuse me, and, you know, uh, at the White House and then uh, all the state houses? This is Andrew Cuomo. Now, Cuomo is seen by many as the guy who just gives everybody a sense of calm and steady and he's got things handled and next to him is de blasio there with his hand on his chin de blasio on the other hand is a loose cannon de blasio is one of those guys who rather get rid of all our civil liberties this is a problem we've got our constitutional rights those things that you're supposed to be so bedrock that we would literally not be a nation under the current constitution and give up our constitutional rights. The Bill of Rights, the first 10 amendments. Remember, the states refused to ratify this convention until the delegates agreed they would put in this list of Bill of Rights. And 10 of them became mandatory if we're gonna operate as a nation. What's under the assault of this medical emergency? Our freedom of speech. That's happening in so many ways. Our First Amendment uh, is at risk. 
you can't go uh, petition your government for redress of grievance. I mean, crap, you can't even get in the Capitol. I personally have a problem with uh, the so-called press being treated with special rights because the Constitution never gave the media, the news media, any particular special right. When our Constitution talks about the freedom of the press, they were referring to a mode of distribution, not an industry. That's right. It's your right to print, publish, and distribute your free speech. And you have every bit the right that anybody who works for some commercial rag trying to sell mattresses and uh, get a cut off of it. You know, let's face it. Citizenship includes this kind of free speech. So let's talk about that. What else? Freedom of religion. Do you see what happened in Florida? I tell you what, that's one thing I feel like we responded all over the United States and we got the government to back off. Now, I wrote a really uh, poignant article a lot of people have shared around the, the state and the nation about, you know, when my dad went to war in Korea, they sent chaplains embedded with all the troops. And those chaplains risked life and limb. Some of them were conscientious objectors, would not even carry a gun. But yet they were there to minister to the spiritual needs of these people that were facing death in the eye. And sometimes, well, the medics, who might also be conscientious objectors, were trying to save the lives of these people uh, when they're injured, shot, bloody, you know, messed up, bleeding to death. The chaplain would be ministering to the spiritual needs while the medic was dealing with medical needs. Now, we're in sort of a state of war. We're under attack globally. It's not just the United States. But this is by an enemy we can't see. And our military is helpless to defend us. But I read a scripture that says, Is anyone sick of, among you? Let him call for the elders of the church. And let them anoint him with oil and pray for him. And the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous man avails much. It also says in the prayer of faith, shall save him and shall raise him up. This is what our ministers do. It's in the time of most crucial need that we want our clergy there. We want our church to be able to, to assemble. That's another one of the constitutional rights, the freedom of peaceable assembly. Now, does that mean they have a right to be stupid? You know, here's the problem I have. They're treating us like we're some kind of toddler nation here. But we don't have the good sense to protect our own lives. And that's just flat out insulting. At least it is to me. Now, I know you may think, well, I, I've got better sense, but those idiots on the other side of town, I don't know about. Well, listen, you take care of you, I'll take care of me. And the government should just take care of the government at this point. There are some things that we do um, delegate to our government, and they should be doing those things. But running our lives or shaming us, those are things that make the government our enemy and not our organizer, not our ministers. And I want to encourage the government to call on the higher nature, the best nature in all of us, and let us rise up to meet those high expectations. So that's, um, that's what I want to talk about. Different governors are doing different things. And, uh, you know, let's not make their job harder, but please, let's not put up with them making our job harder. Governor Stitt, last weekend about this time, I uncovered some data. CNN had uh, posted it up. They had kept track of what happened in every state as far as how many people were diagnosed with uh, COVID-19 virus and how many had died. Well, when I ran the numbers, how many amongst those who are verified as 
having this uh, this virus, how many are dying? And the numbers didn't make Oklahoma look good. In fact, it made us look pretty bad. We had the fourth highest death rate amongst those who are verified um, uh, patients uh, stricken with the COVID virus flu. So <clears throat> I published that. Oh my goodness, that article went all over. I mean, it in all kinds of circles. And the heat that I'm sure fell on this man, or Governor Kevin Stitt, was pretty difficult. And a number of people rightly said, as I did, that it's because we aren't testing hardly anyone. In fact, we were rationing, saving those tests for the very worst cases. And I understand there's a reason to do that, but it also, in my hope is that it also empowered Governor Stitt to make his case to the federal government that we need more tests here because there's by the time we test them they're probably so far downhill on their health that they've got a higher chance of dying we need to start testing earlier and so middle of this week uh, Governor Stitt was able to announce that we've gotten in quite a few test kits and now anybody who reaches uh, uh, a fever of uh, what 100.4 or higher and has you know symptoms consistent uh, yes don't withhold it from any of them he's telling all the uh, county health department workers so so we've got good news on that uh, we are able to get more tests yes we are confirming a lot more people uh, with this uh, with this condition this is kind of exciting for me. It was kind of dramatic. Uh, and what I want to talk about is personal. I got a call a couple weeks ago from my mother. You know, I'm from a large family, 11. One of my sisters, and I'm not going to name who, um, because it's private medical uh, information. She uh, was on a flight and uh, from New York, uh, JFK, going out to Salt Lake City. And she uh, was the lead flight attendant on this flight and has to take care of the cockpit. And she goes into the cockpit and the pilot says, I just got a text from my wife. She was just confirmed positive COVID-19. And he said, yeah, I just came from home get on this flight now he didn't have any probable reason to think he might be sick but nevertheless uh, a number of days later a week later or so my sister's sick and yeah it hit her hard and she uh, said you know and by the way she lives in the Seattle area okay yeah so she says it's like somebody is pounding on my chest my lungs hurt so bad uh dry cough i don't hardly risk standing up by myself because you never know when the dizzy spells are going to hit you and you could fall over you can't and when that hits you can't even keep your balance she uh, self-quarantined she did telemed but there were no test kits in the seattle area and they had nothing to test her with this a couple weeks ago and uh eventually she was um you know she got all the best medical help and we all just assumed the worst my mother called me a few hours ago tonight she said i want to let you know your sister was just verified as having the antibodies of the COVID-19 virus. All of her symptoms have, uh, have gone away. Uh, she considers herself over it. And here's the cool thing. This is the takeaway tonight. This is the exciting thing. They talk about a vaccine some way of inoculating you so that if you do get the virus your body can fight it off 
Well, my sister is one of those machines creating that vaccine. Her blood is so full of antibodies that she is working with her medical team now to plan a course and schedule of donating plasma because her plasma will be rich in antibodies. And anybody who can take her plasma uh, gets some of that super juice that'll help fight the COVID-19 virus. This is where humanity has a chance to shine. And I'm proud of my sister. I really am. Because she's going to turn this into an opportunity to help her fellow man. And I hope that that's encouragement to all the rest of us who don't know whether we've been exposed when we're one of those who are carrying it. You know, uh, as we get going in the next couple of weeks, they want us to now start, you know, wearing gloves. They not only want us to wear bandanas, you know, they want us now to even consider wearing goggles. And then, of course, put on a hoodie, something to cover you up. Remember, remember four years ago, Don, Senator Don Barrington had the hoodie bill that said it's illegal to go out in public with your face disguised. Well, crap, now it's going to become um, an emergency rule that you can't go out there unless you're totally covered up. Oh, it's just too funny sometimes, folks. But anyway, I'm David Van. Uh, that's my report for this weekend. And I hope you stay well. And let's talk on social media. I'm David Van with SoonerPolitics.org. Look up Sooner Politics on Facebook, both the page and the group. And uh, be good to your family. Call your friends. Call your neighbors. Check, it, check up on each other. And that's my report. Thank you very much. Have a good night.